Everyone wants a sleek, minimal desktop Linux setup, but no one wants to spend days ricing Arch Linux. But what if I told you that you don't need to go through all that? With just a few tweaks to your Linux operating system, you can make it look much more visually appealing. So this is what we get when we install Kali Linux for the first time. It's pretty boring. But this is what I created after making some small tweaks. It's not Arch Linux, it's Kali Linux. But it looks quite different from the default setup, right? Just take a look at this bar and this Arch icon I swapped in for the Kali icon. Today we're going to do this step by step. And if you're new here, you already know what I'm about to say next. So just do it. Anyways, I've got a completely fresh Kali Linux install in my virtual machine. First, we're going to fix our panel, this thing right here. We want it minimal, so we'll remove all the extra stuff and just keep a few necessary items. To do that, right-click on the panel and select Panel Preferences. Now go to the Items tab and remove everything you don't need. What I want to keep here is the whisker menu, the action buttons, and the clock. I'm going minimal so I'm only keeping a few things, but you can adjust this however you like. Next, let's change the whisker menu icon. The default Kali icon looks fine, but I don't really like it. So I'll just double click on the whisker menu, go to the appearance tab and change the icon from there. You can pick one that's already available or download a new one. Once that's done, just close it. Now let's fix our clock. Double click the clock item and from this menu, you can change its layout. I really like the LCD style, but you could also try the binary clock, though honestly, I don't really understand it. So I'll just stick with the LCD one. We don't need to change anything in the action buttons, but something's missing, right? The items are way too close together, we need some spacing. To fix that, we can add separators. Add one separator right after the whisker menu, double click it, make it transparent, check the expand option and close it. Then add another separator after the clock item, do the same thing. Make it transparent and expand it. Now our panel looks much cleaner and more balanced. You can also make more changes, like moving the panel to the bottom or even to the sides if you want. But for now, I'll just keep it at the top. Okay, so now let's take a look at our desktop. First, we need a beautiful wallpaper. You can download one of your choice. We also need to remove these icons from the desktop since we don't really need them. Once you've got your wallpaper, just right-click on the desktop and go to Desktop Settings. First, let's remove the icons. Head over to the Desktop Icons tab and set the icon type to None. Now go back to the Background tab and select your wallpaper. Mine's in the Downloads folder, so I'll just pick it from there and there we go, Wallpaper Set. Already the desktop is looking a lot more minimal, but we've still got plenty more tweaks to do. The next thing we need to do is change the default theme. Just look at the difference. This VM is using the Kali default theme, but this one is using the Dracula theme, and it looks really good. So we're going to set up the same theme on this VM too. Open the link provided in the description and copy the link to the zip file from there. Now, open your terminal and move into this themes directory using CD. Once you're in, type wget and paste the copied link. That will start downloading the Dracula theme zip file into your themes folder after it's downloaded, type unzip and file name to extract it. Make sure to use sudo for both commands, otherwise you'll run into errors. Once that's done, we're almost ready. Click on the whisker menu, search for appearance, and you'll see a window like this. From there, you should see the GTK master theme. Just click it, and your theme will switch to the Dracula theme. It looks so much better, at least to me it looks beautiful. Now we need to do a few more important changes to our terminal. There is no Linux customization without the terminal, so we're going to do some changes in it as well. First of all, we don't need this terminal. We need to install the other one, the XFCE one. For that, just type the following command. This will install XFCE for terminal. Once installed, you can use the whisker menu to open our new terminal. This one is different from the old one. Now we're going to do a few changes in it. First, we got to install the Dracula theme for this thing as well. Open the second link provided in the description. You'll be taken to this website. Now we've got our installation method here. First, copy this part from here because we need to create this directory. In your XFCE terminal type mkdir-p and then this path. It will create a new color schemes directory at this path. Now, come back to the site. Copy this command 
and paste it right into your terminal. This will clone the repository. Once cloned CD into it, and now we need to copy the Dracula.theme file into that color schemes folder we created. We can use the cp command for this. Once copied, we now need to apply this theme in our terminal. For that, in your terminal, click on Edit and then Preferences. You may see a window like this. Now go to the Colors tab and click on Select Presets. You may be able to see Dracula here. If not, make sure to do the steps again. Once you select the Dracula theme, you'll see the colors change in the terminal. Okay, so our Dracula theme for the terminal has been applied, but we're not done yet. We still need to do a few more tweaks. First, I don't like the scroll bar in the terminal, so I'll remove it. For that, go to the General tab and disable the scroll bar from there. You can also change the cursor shape, but it's fine for now. One more thing is the default geometry. I don't want to resize my terminal every time I open a new one, so I'll set a default geometry. You can set your size accordingly. I'm setting this for now. We're almost done with our customization here, but there are a few optional things I showed you in the thumbnail. These aren't really necessary, but if you do them, they'll definitely add to the beauty of your system. The first one is NeoFetch with custom ASCII art. By the way, NeoFetch has been outdated and can no longer be installed via APT in Kali Linux, but we can still install it. You can git clone their GitHub repository and then use the make file to build the package. After installation, you can use your own custom ASCII art just like this one. You can download any ASCII art from the internet, put it in a file, and then make an alias like this to use it as the logo for your NeoFetch. Otherwise, you can also edit the configs, but honestly, that's brain rotting. I've already tried it. And if you want to know about those borderless images I used in the thumbnail, I was using the FE image viewer. You can install it by typing the following command in your Linux. It's an awesome image viewer. Once installed, you can use it like this. Just add the borderless flag to view images without any kind of border, which looks really cool, to be honest. The last thing I want to talk about here is shortcuts. You really need to set up some shortcuts in Kali Linux. You can't always go to the Whisker menu to open apps. For setting up shortcuts, search keyboard in the Whisker menu, and this window will open. Now click on the Shortcut tab, and you'll see some default shortcuts already set up. For example, the super key plus W will open the web browser. The one I customized was for the terminal. I use the XFCE4 terminal instead of the default terminal here. You can also add more shortcuts for the applications you use most. Well, that's a little video about Linux customization. I hope you liked it. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video. I often upload content about hacking, Linux, and cybersecurity here.